Hey, what's up guys? Just on my way to the gym, uh, cranking out a video for you guys about three top budget travel tips. Did a newsletter about this um, and a lot of you guys gave me a lot of positive feedback in regards to this and said, make a video uh, in regards to this because you know, these tips are really good, but sometimes on paper, it sounds a little bit different than when I'm actually talking about it from personal experience. So right now, obviously, I have the luxury of doing a bunch of TV shows, and I get to travel around the world uh, for free. You know, it's for work, right? Um, but when I first started traveling and backpacking, there was no one flying me anywhere. Um, I had little to no money in my bank account and I wanted to explore the world. It's always been my dream just to explore the world and see different cultures around the world. And so um, the first time I went backpacking, I think I was like 22 years old, uh, 23 and then 24. And I did all this stuff uh, on my own with my own money. I think I, was, I also did it when I was 25. Did it, I went in Europe, I went all over Brazil, I did um, a little bit of Thailand as well. And I guess my biggest, I learned a lot, especially from like Thailand trips and the Brazil and the European trips. And I think Europe is a big destination, especially for people coming from North America. You know, and you want to go, but the bank account says, oh my God, like, you know, I only have five grand and I'm supposed to make a, a two month vacation out of this or, or whatever it may be and you think it's impossible. But little do you know, it's totally possible. So the first thing that I recommend doing, number one tip, is actually buying a travel guide. Or you can go to the library if you want to. But the reason I say buy a travel guide and don't just go on Google to search for stuff is because a lot of reviews, a lot of suggestions are very biased and purchased uh, on Google nowadays. You'll see a lot of these places that uh, get top ratings or get reviewed are just, you know, a lot of companies will pay for reviews uh, to, you know, get the restaurants up there or or get locations spotted, things like that. Obviously, there's a lot of good suggestions on Google. I'm not going to say no to that, but I really think it's great to have a physical guide in hand to be able to, um, you know, see what things you can do. And I just, I just feel like when you have a book, it's just so much easier than opening up your phone and doing this and this and you can you can mark certain pages and there's usually a map of the main area that you're heading to it's just for whatever reason it's a lot more comforting it's a lot more exciting and it's a lot easier to organize your time when you have a travel guide in front of you you can get by just so much more easily in my opinion step number two number two hostels now a lot I, I know that a lot of people that I've mentioned to uh, hostels a lot of people will say hostel you mean like the movie hostel where people get murdered and chopped up no especially when you're traveling alone okay I, I highly recommend when you travel and you backpack do it alone once you learn so much about yourself when you travel alone it, it just it's so damn awesome because when you're with somebody else, it's great, but sometimes you have two different ideas and you're like, and you have to compromise on ideas. When you're on your own, you do whatever the hell you want to do, right? And so when you're traveling alone, the best and you know budget-friendly way of traveling around is hostels. And that means that you're gonna be sharing a room with four, eight, sometimes a hundred people in one room. And you're basically paying for a bed, uh, a place to stay, and more than often they'll have they'll give you breakfast you'll be able to have a hot shower there and you'll have a locker to put your stuff in and that's it because when you're traveling around you're not you're not trying to stay in the hotel that is not your goal right uh, when you're traveling with two people it all depends on where you are sometimes it makes more sense to get a hotel but sometimes even with two people it's one cheaper and more fun to be in a hostel because you get to meet so many damn cool people. Um, I still have connections with people that I met 10 years ago through hostels. 
because it's you go out with them, you just simply share stories, and you have a good time. Um, I know for a fact that I've gotten hostels in Europe for five to ten dollars a night. That's it, five to ten dollars a night. It actually went down to two dollars and fifty cents in Thailand, and for that I got a room with air conditioning, breakfast, and a toilet to use with a shower. Like how? Like it's just. You can't beat that. That is a hotel will cost you like a hundred bucks minimum, right? Okay, you can probably get a hotel for sixty bucks and probably risk bed bugs and all that other stuff. But if you can get yourself a hostel for let's say ten dollars, even max even twenty dollars a night, you can still do very, very well and you know be able to spend five extra days in a city as compared with one night in a hotel. And that's a budget hotel. You know, if you went up to a luxury hotel that costs you like $500 a night, well then, you know, <laughs> you're not gonna be able to last too long on these trips. Um, so hostels, obviously some cities are just really expensive and those ho hostels can cost like $40, $50 a night, but still the hotel will cost you a minimum of $250 a night. You know, obviously cities will vary. But if you do your research and you're not that picky, you can get a super cheap hostel, meet really cool people, and be able to go far um, with your travels. Um, third thing that I would say, I can do tons and tons of endless tips, but the third top travel tip that I wanna give is do your research with flights. You know, you say you wanna go to Europe and you're just like, okay, I wanna start in the UK, so I'm gonna fly into London Heathrow. No, no, no. London Heathrow, for example, has some of the highest airport taxes in the world. Toronto has some of the highest airport taxes in the world as well. Um, but London Heathrow has super high airport taxes uh, as compared with a lot of other cities where it's just not as bad. You look at flying for example into London and then you compare it to flying into let's say Amsterdam or Frankfurt you can actually get a way way cheaper flight especially for flights that you know are more frequent uh, than other other airports you can get a way cheaper flight so do your research obviously sometimes you can get great great deals to go to London but most of the time it, it costs a little bit more so what you need to do is whatever continent that you are going to, find a very cheap place to fly into, right? When you get to that destination, you know, make that your first city that you're visiting. When you get to that first destination, then you plan out the rest of the destinations that you're going to be going to using the local airfare or trains. Now, there are flights, no joke. I remember flying across Europe for $20. I kid you not. It was $20 to fly across Europe. Stupid cheap airfare in Europe. Um, especially if you look at airlines, there's um, EasyJet, there's Ryanair, there's WizJet, all these, all these budget airlines that will take you from A to B for little to no money. Well, a little bit of money, so for a little money. Um, and so that will save you so much money. Also train travel there um, isn't too bad at all. It can cost you like, you know, a couple of euros to obviously when it's an express train, sometimes it gets a little bit more, but it, uh, it definitely pays off to, what is that? Oh, is my radio going the whole time and I didn't even hear? I apologize for that. So it'll definitely pay off in the long run if you do pick a destination that is cheap to fly into and fly out of, and then you use that money that you saved for flights across Europe or flights across that country that you went to. Because apart from here in North America, I mean, there's Southwest apparently uh, that has cheap flights and everything like that. In Europe, just the flight prices are so much different. When you're in Asia and you're flying within Asia, you can get, there are budget airlines as well. Don't be scared of those. Yeah, you may not have priority seating, but you're getting to your next de destination much faster. So three top travel tips. Make sure you do your research. Don't just be like turned off by looking at some of the prices. There are ways of doing it for cheap, for a budget. Um, 
like I could easily travel for two months on let's say five thousand dollars you know and travel pretty well and uh, that includes a round trip flight to that place and then figuring everything out it's not hard it can be done so I recommend it because your life will change with travel. Your life will change with travel. You will have so much more fun and, and just really understand yourself a lot more. Anyways, promise I would do a video on this uh, for you guys. So three top travel tips. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know in the description below. Give it a thumbs up. And if you guys have any other questions or if you have your top tips, comment below. Catch you guys later. Make sure you check out all my links in the description below. Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram. Check out FuriousApparel.com. And of course, stay sexy, stay hungry, get gains, and get laid. Time to work out. We're going to do... We're gonna, you, we're ready to go, we're ready to go. Three, two, one, let's do this. Move it up here, and then we just go like this.